Hello friends, welcome to the channel Physics by IITians. Hello friends, this is a revision class of magnetostatics. This is the lecture one and in this video lecture we shall know what are the important things in magnetostatics, what are the important topics in magnetostatics that you should know before your net examination. In this video lecture, we shall particularly focus on the Biosabert law, Ampere's law and related problems. So let's start. So first of all, you should know what is magnetostatics. The magnetostatics means the magnetic field at any point due to steady current is called as magnetostatic field. Steady current means the time varying current is not present there or the current is not time varying and the mag what will be the steady current condition situation i shall tell you in the next slides okay first of all you should know if there is a is a current element and the current is flowing along that element what will be the magnetic force on current element so the magnetic force on a charge Q moving with velocity V in a magnetic field B is F magnetic is Q into V cross B. And this is known as Lorentz force law. Now, if both the fields that is electric field as well as magnetic fields are present, what will be the net force on charge Q? The net force on charge Q will be F equals to Q E plus Q into V cross B. I think you all know this equation suppose there is a current in a wire and let us find out the force magnetic force so a line charge lambda that is traveling down a wire at a speed v that will constitute a current i equals to lambda into v so the magnetic force on a segment of current carrying wire is f magnetic is equals to integration over v cross v into dq or it can be written as V cross B into lambda DL or it can be written as integration over I cross B into DL okay because I equals to lambda into V now since I and DL points in the same direction so F magnetic is integration over I into DL cross V or I of integration over DL cross V so suppose last previously we have taken we have taken the line charge case now we shall take the surface current density so the surface current density when charge flows over a surface we described it by surface current k k is the current vector so k vector can be written as di by dl lambda where this is the current per unit with per perpendicular to the flow okay also k is sigma into v where sigma is the surface charge density and v is the velocity so magnetic force on a surface element surface current f magnetic that is integration over v cross b into sigma da or it can be written as integration over k cross b into da okay because k is sigma into v now we shall consider the volume current density so when the flow of charge is distributed throughout a three dimensional region, we describe it by volume current density capital J. So J capital equals to DI by DA perpendicular. That is the current per unit area perpendicular to flow. Okay. Also J can be written as rho into V where rho is the volume charge density and V is its velocity. Magnetic force on volume current F magnetic equals to integration over V cross V into rho d tau or integration over J cross B into d tau as J equals to rho into V. Now current crossing a surface S that is I which is equal integration over S J dot dA or J dot dS. Okay. So here we have an announcement that we have full length test series, topic wise test series, combined test series for your upcoming examinations like NET, GATE, JAM. So if you are interested, you go to the link and know the details. Come to our lecture. So suppose a wire that is A, B, C, D, E, F. So okay. So this is the wire. So this is A, B, C, D, E, F. So with each of side of length L 
bend as shown in this figure and carrying a current i is placed in a uniform magnetic induction b parallel to the positive y direction so find the force experienced by the wire so this is the this is the current carrying uh, loop suppose if this is a wire not loop uh, i should say a b c d e f this is the wire and each have length a side of length l and it is bent something like this way and it is carrying a current i that is placed in a uniform magnetic field b and this b is parallel to the positive y direction okay so the find this force experienced by the wire so if here look here fe and ba are parallel to the magnetic induction b so this is component fe this is ba and these two are parallel to this magnetic field component so magnetic force on each of them will be zero because parallel v cross b will be zero term q into v cross b so de and cb are perpendicular to b look here this two de and cb these are perpendicular to b so they carry currents in opposite directions so forces on them will be equal and in magnitude and opposite in direction so what we have to consider here the net force due to these portions of the wire will be zero so bc and de will also be zero so the, now the force on side dc that is this this one okay is fdc that is i into l into b along z cap okay so this is the side of length l and the magnitude of the magnetic force uh, or magnetic field magnetic induction is b so it will be i l b z cap so whenever you are considering this kind of problems we shall discuss more about that but first of all you should know that whether the loop or the segment is parallel to the magnetic field or perpendicular to the magnetic field whether the segments are oppositely oriented that magnetic field will uh, force will cancel each other or whether or not these things you have to consider so we are taking now the consideration of continuity equation just to make you understand what is the steady state condition so continuity equation is del dot j equals to minus del rho del t or it can be written as del dot j plus del rho del t equals to zero so this is actually the mathematical statement of local charge conservation means there is no need of creation of charges or destruction of charges whatever you are considering here the flux that is incoming flux is equals to outgoing flux there is no creation and destruction in between these two flows whenever a steady current flows in a wire its magnitude i that is the current must be same all along the line so otherwise charge would be piling up somewhere and it would not be a steady current so thus for the magnetostatic field this del rho by del t term is zero and the con continuity equation will give you del dot j equals to zero okay so since there is a no piling up of charges uh, so the no time varying so del rho del t will become zero here and this is the steady state condition that is del dot j is zero now we should we should learn about pierce law so why do we need pierce law we need to find out the magnetic field due to the steady current and we will apply the pierce law suppose we are finding out the magnetic field of a steady line current and that will be given by db equals to mu not by 4 pi i into dl cross r divided by r cube where this is the length or the line current and this is dl is the small line segment and this is p is your point of observation and distance between them is r vector and dl cross r means it will give you this angle okay so the magnetic field due to a steady line current is given by this biot law or you can also apply biot law in uh, different uh, cases also so here what is mu naught mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 newton per ampere square this is also known as permeability of free space suppose we are not considering the line case but we are considering the surface current and volume current and then the biot law will become for the surface current that is b at any point r is mu naught by 4 pi integration over k cross r by r square dA prime 
here d a prime is the surface area and b at of at uh, any position r equals to mu naught by 4 pi integration over j cross r cap by r square into d tau prime where d tau is the volume element or d tau prime is the volume element so we can apply part support law for the magnetic field to calculate the magnetic field due to a wire so let us find the magnetic field at a distance d from a long straight wire carrying a steady current i so this is the long straight wire and suppose we are taking a line wire segment of this amount is this much and we are trying to find out the magnetic field due to the steady current at this point of observation that is p so you should remember the form plus that magnetic field R from a long straight wire carrying a steady current I is B equals to mu naught I by 4 pi R sin theta 2 minus sin theta 1 where theta 1 theta 2 are this here already given in this figure. The magnetic field at a distance R from an infinite carrying steady current I from an infinite wire carrying a steady current I that is B equals to mu naught I by 2 pi R into phi cap. Now force per unit length of attraction between two long parallel wires a distance d apart carrying currents i1 and i2 in the same direction then force is given as f equals to mu naught by 2 pi i1 i2 divided by d where d is the distance between the two current carrying wires. If the currents are in opposite direction then they will repel with the same magnitude. So the, the current that are going in the same direction, uh, they will attract each other, the lines and if they are opposite in direction, the currents, then the wires will ripple each other with the same magnitude. Suppose we take an example here to find the force on a square loop placed as shown in this figure near an infinite straight line wire. This is the infinite straight wire and this is the square loop. So both the loop and the wire carry a steady current I. So what will be the net force? So it is also carrying a current I. This is also carrying a steady current I. So whenever there is a very common So the force on the two sides, this will cancel each other because they are actually equal and opposite. Now at the bottom, that is this much uh, distance, magnetic field B equals to mu naught I by 2 pi D. So force equals to mu naught I by 2 pi D into IA. Okay, so it will become mu naught I squared A by 2 pi D. This is along up direction. Now at the bottom, this B is mu naught i by 2 pi into d plus a. So f equals to mu naught i square a by 2 pi into d plus a. This is down. So the net force is mu naught i square a square by 2 pi d into d plus a and this is up direction. So you have to consider this too. First of all, you have to consider this whole loop that how much current is passing through and then you have to consider the segments which are actually cancelling each other and the segments which are going to give you the force, which are going to give you the magnetic field. Then from the magnetic field, you find out the force term and then take the net force. Okay, that's all. Let us consider another example to find the force of attraction between two long parallel wires a distance d apart car carrying current I1 and I2 in the same direction. So wire 1 is carrying current I1, wire 2 is carrying current I2. So the field at 2, this is wire 2 due to wire 1 is B equals to mu naught into I1 divided by 2 pi d. So why we haven't taken I2? considering the field due to current I1. So we have to include this term I1, not this term I2. Okay. So the field on 2 or on wire 2 due to wire 1 is B into B equals to mu naught into I1 divided by 2 pi into the distance between them that is D. So this is points into the page and force on 2 that is F is I2 into mu naught. This is the field so force will be I2 or 2 current. So I2 into 
mu not that is b this one mu not i1 by 2 pi d into integration over dl so dl here uh, it will give you the term that is f equals to mu not into i1 i2 divided by 2 pi d so force per unit length is towards 1 and net force is attractive so we have learned also that whenever the current are going along the same direction they will attract each other let us take another uh, example. This is another thing that uh, the magnetic field due to the solenoid and toroid. The magnetic field for a very long solenoid consisting of closely wound, uh, turns per unit length of a cylinder of radius r and carrying a steady current i that is b equals to mu naught ni along z cap for inside the solenoid and outside the solenoid it will become zero and magnetic field due to the toroid that is mu naught ni by 2 pi r phi cap for points inside the coil and it will be zero for points outside the coil and this capital n is the total number of turns i think you all know about these formulas i I am giving you just a revision for you to remember these things and from uh, also biosubert law we can find out the magnetic field for a circular loop with a radius of suppose small a and it is carrying a current i and we can find the magnetic field on the axis at a distance from the center of the loop so here this is the current carrying loop and we are going to find out the magnetic field from uh, at this point p from uh, at a distance that is from the center of the loop. Okay, so uh, applying bar support law, apply it, you will get that magnetic field B will be mu naught i by 2 into a square divided by z plus a square whole to the power 3 by 2 along z cap. And at the center of this loop, magnetic field will be B equals to mu naught i by twice a z cap because here z term will be 0. Now let us take another very good example that is Helmont square. In Helmont square, there are two circular loops and they have equal turn. So let us take their radius as small a and same number of turns and they are carrying the same current and they are separated by a distance 2D. So let us consider a point P uh, at a small distance X from the midpoint. So this is suppose the midpoint and we are considering uh, another distance X that is from the midpoint another point and we want to calculate the magnetic field due to these two coils and it will become b equals to mu naught a i n by 2 a square by a square plus d plus x whole square whole to the power 3 by 2 plus a square by a square plus d minus x whole square whole to the power 3 by 2 and if you calculate you will get that the magnetic field near the midpoint will be the uniform and it will be maximum at midpoint if the separation between them is equal to the radius and the field at midpoint is b equals to 8 by 5 root 5 mu naught ni divided by a where capital n is the number of turns what is ampere law now you all know about the ampere's law and uh, barsover law but i again here tell you that the ampere's law is the magnetic field of an infinite wire is shown is suppose this this is infinite wire and this is shown as in the figure and let's find out the integral of over b around a circular path of radius r the centered at the wire so this is the wire and we are finding out some circular path into finding out the integral over this b and, and this is the circular path of radius and we will get that closed integral over b dot dl is mu naught into i. So in general the Ampere's law can be written as closed integral over b dot dl is mu naught into i enclosed where i enclosed is the total current enclosed by the Amperean law. So it is also written as closed integral over b dot dl equals to mu naught into i enclosed so curl of b dot ds that is integration over curl of b dot ds equals to mu naught into integration over j dot ds okay so it can be written as curl of b equals to mu naught j so this two formula that is curl of uh, closed integral over b dot dl equals to mu naught i enclosed and curl of b equals to mu naught j you should remember 
So our in our portal, the full name tests are also activated. Subject wise tests are also activated. Special interview guidance package for cracking integrated PhD, PhD in physics interviews. We will take mock interviews just like real interview. And the cost has been kept minimum for your benefit. That is only 699 rupees per year. And also a special offer for those students who have already registered our test series. And they will have to only pay 500 rupees per year. So contact us on our Telegram channel for more information. Let us take here some example. So a steady current I that is flowing down a long cylinder wire of radius A. So radius of the cylinder is smaller. Now find the magnetic field, both the inside of the wire, outside of the wire. If the current is uniformly distributed over outside the surface of the wire, and secondly, the current is distributed in such a way that J is proportional to R, that is the distance from the axis. So how to find out? So first of all, you have to apply the ampere circuital law. So integration over b dot dl so this is a closed integral so b into 2 pi r integration over dl will give you 2 pi r and it is mu naught into i enclosed so b is equals to 0 for r is less than a because the current is only outside so r outside for r greater than a i enclosed is i so b is mu naught i divided by 2 pi r into z cap now So, 0 to a, j value is kr and ds value or da value is 2 pi r into dr. So, this da is the surface element, okay, and this a is the radius of a cylinder. So, it can be written as just compute this value that is 2 pi k a cube by 3. So, k is equals to 3 i by 2 pi a cube. So, i enclosed is i for r greater than a and i enclosed is i r cube by a cube for r less than a so you can find out the value of b that is mu naught i r square by 2 pi a cube phi cap for r less than a mu naught i by 2 pi r phi cap for r greater than a so what you have done here you first calculate closed integral over b dot dl so whenever there is a circle so you will get 2 pi r is equals to mu naught into i enclosed. Now i enclosed is the enclosed current. Now you have to understand there are two regions where current is finite and another region there is no current. So you put the values accordingly, you find out the magnetic field. Similarly, suppose there is there is the current density j is given. So this is the surface current density. So j equals to kr. So from there you can find out i because for the magnetic field you need the value of i. So find out the value of i and then you find out the regions where the current is how much and then put this value on this magnetic field expression get the magnetic field let us take some examples more in that has already come in your paper a conducting loop carrying a current i is placed in a uniform magnetic field pointing into the plane of paper as shown in this figure the loop will have a tendency to contract expand move towards the positive x-axis moves towards the negative x-axis so look here this is the current is going okay so you have to apply that you have either here it is given as that how the what the loop will have the tendency so the you have to find out the force direction so q into v cross v you have to consider so here the v cross v direction will be fair the v this is the v this is b is well, the outside the paper uh, so v cross b will actually this the try to the expand the loop okay so this consider the expression for force whenever you find out this kind of uh, uh, question and you have to understand the direction of the force next question is a square loop is placed near an infinite straight where as shown in this figure the loop and oil carry a steady current i2 and i1 respectively the force acting on the square loop is mu naught i1 i2 by 2 pi a mu naught i1 i2 by 4 pi a 
mu not i1 i2 by 2 pi mu not i1 i2 by 4 pi so the force on these two sides first of all they will cancel each other only these two sides forces will contribute so at the bottom b is mu not i by 2 pi a so this much so a force is mu not i by 2 pi a into i2 a so it will become mu not i1 i2 by 2 pi at the bottom uh, it is the uh, at the top sorry this one so at the top is b equals to mu not i1 by 4 pi a equals to uh, f equals to mu not i1 by 4 pi a into i2 a so it will become mu not i1 i2 by 4 pi because the distance between them is 2 a so this is 4 pi a 2 into 2 pi into 2 a so okay or 2 into 2 pi uh, 2 into pi into 2 a you should uh, 2 pi here a this is 2a so the net force will become mu naught i1 i2 by 4 pi this is around the up direction this is another similar question and this is for your homework uh, this is actually this is here, here written as inward okay so the question is the oil loop p q r s p so this is p q r s p so this is here joined formed by joining the two semicircular wires of radii this is r1 this is r2 and a current i as shown in this figure so the magnetic field at the center here what will be the magnitude of this magnetic field the direction of this magnetic field that is mu1 i by 2 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 outward mu not i by 2 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 inward mu not i by 4 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 outward mu not i by 4 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 inward the correct answer is c please do this homework so you can also have free test link in our portal this is the portal link and you will give free test there and full solutions are also available thank you for your cooperation so the sharing of knowledge is the best way of helping the society thanks for your support and please subscribe the channel and also you can join our telegram channel for regular quizzes and research updates thanks